Now I'm going to illustrate the use of indices for tables. So let's say I have two tables in my JDO database. I have a table CC user and a table CC transaction. Okay, so CC, I, am, I have a, a business, assuming I have a business here that uh, I have uh, about 10,000 users and the table users looks like this. It's credit card number, the first name and last name, that's my users and I have about 10,000 of these. And let's say that I get from a credit card company a table of transactions so I can see where a lot of credit cards have been and what they have bought. So for example, the CC transaction table looks like this. The credit card number, the label, where, where, where the purchase head was made, what point of sale it was made on, basically what register, for what amount, and the transaction date. So here's the thing. I have my little company here, right? I have my company here with my customers, and I have transaction data. So I want to know more about my clients with this transaction table. So let's look at some sample queries. So let's see, well, how many transactions are there in the transaction table? I can run the count, and that took, if you see here, whenever a query is executed in MySQL, you'll get some sort of output with the total number of uh, milliseconds, right? So here's 0 0.657, so basically a little bit over half a second. And I have a million two hundred and 41,000 records approximately. Now, one thing that I might want to do is say I, I've identified a customer, and this is uh, his or her credit card, and I want to know what are the transactions that this person has done. So I can execute this query, and I know that this person has performed 49 transactions, so I can see the use, right? And I also know that this took about half a second to execute. This query took about half a second. so. We'll put a comment right here about, about 0 0.6 seconds. Now, another thing that I, can, that I can find out, for example, is here. So like how many customers that I have have transactions in Walgreen? So how many customers that I have have actually purchased at Walgreens? And this is a rather long query. It's going to take a long time because the minute that I have a join, okay, it has to do the Cartesian product of all the transaction records, which are over a million, with all 10,000 customers. And it'll do the tie on credit card numbers. So it has to be going to the transaction table and finding where is it that the user and the transaction have the same credit card number. And then of those, it'll filter the label that says Walgreens. Now, this will take a little bit, so I'm going to uh, fast forward the video. Now, this query took actually 107 seconds to come back, right? And it told me that basically of my clients, there are 19,000 transactions at Walgreens. Now, I can also ask, for example, this is a more complicated query, I invite you to look at it, but it basically says, give me all the clients, all of my customers, that have bought something at CVS and have bought something at Walgreens. The way we do this is by saying, give me all the transactions that have happened in Walgreens, all the credit card numbers in Walgreens, and of those, give me all the transactions from my clients where they have been in CVS and also the credit card number corresponds to a number that has been at Walgreens. So this is it, for example, if I want to see if I want to offer a product that is usually offered in Walgreens or if I'm running a supermarket, whether I have like a little pharmacy section, well, I want to see of the clients that come to my supermarket, how many go then to CVS and Walgreens. So I'll run this query. Again, this is a long query, it's not as long as the previous one, but it's very long based on the fact that, again, there's a join here, a Cartesian product. Now, the good thing there is that this query first filters all the credit card numbers with labels Walgreens, 
and then it will do the Cartesian product, so it's a smaller Cartesian product. Therefore, the square is a little faster. I'll fast forward to the end. And this query took about 51 seconds, if you can read down here. 51.6, so 52 seconds approximately, to produce all the people that buy pharmacy products. So these are some, some sample queries that I can run. But some of these are very slow, mostly if they involve a join. So one, one way in which I can improve this is by creating an index, basically by telling the database to, to have faster algorithms to look up for some attributes in the database. So for example, one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add an index on the, on the user table. Let's look at this statement very quickly. I'm going to alter the table because I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to alter the table user. and I'm going to add a primary key on credit card number. Primary key is not only, does not only serve as a constraint to make sure that there is no repeated records, but it's also an index. Basically, it creates uh, a hidden structure by which searching for credit card numbers, in this case, on CC user is going to be a lot faster. So I can run this. Creating the index actually doesn't, doesn't take much. But now let's, let's clear these results and let's do some of our queries now. Remember this one, for example, um, this one here, the longest one. I want to select how many of, our cu of my customers actually shop at Walgreens. I'm going to run this query. And this query now took about a second, okay? So that's a hundred times less. That makes this very, very fast. I'm gonna try to do the ones that, uh, for the people that shop both in my and CVS and Walgreens, my customers that shop at CVS and Walgreens. And I run this one. And this one took about 1.7 seconds, which is a lot faster than the 47 seconds that we had before, as you can see. But these queries are greatly improved 47 times, 100 times in another case, right? So these queries are, are greatly improved. Now, let's select all the, all the counts, all the, the transactions for this credit card number. Now, this one was a lot slower. Here's I, I have a comment. I'm going to remove that because it's confusing things. But if I run this query, you'll see that it takes about 0 0.7 seconds. Okay. If I run it again, it's about 0 0.7 seconds. Okay. So it's still in the order of 0 0.67 seconds, right? But this is because the primary key on credit card uh, users on the CC user table does not affect the CC transaction. Now the CC transaction table, let's examine it by going to objects. If I go to the CC transaction table, you'll see that, let's look at the structure here. We have, uh, oops, I'm sorry, columns. So we have credit card number, label, point of sale, amount, and trans date, which is actually just tracks days, not time. So in this, for this example, so what happens is that many people can use, I mean, one person can use their credit card multiple times within one date. So credit card and date is not a possible key because there are many of the same. Now, I can go and buy at a store twice in a day. So for example, if I need batteries and then I went, I went to my house and I discovered that, oh, I was missing one battery, I can go back to the same store and buy batteries again, which then says that credit card and label might not be a good primary key because there might be duplicates, right? Within a date, for example. Um, also, if I go buy batteries again, the amount is the same. I bought the same product twice in the same day at the same place. And if I live in a small neighborhood, it might be that my store only has one register and I always use that register. So the possibility of all these attributes to be repeated exists. So I cannot create a primary key here in this table transaction. Instead, what I can do is create an index 
basically say, do not use referential integrity here about some fields being non null or not duplicates, but still try to create a, a hidden data structure to make retrieval of some information here faster. And to do that, we use for this syntax. For example, I'm going to alter table CC transaction. I'm going to add an index. I will name that index. I can name this whatever I want, index Duffy, if I want to. I just named IDX for index and CCN for credit card number. And then the field that I want to index, or the fields, you can index more than one field. So just like you can have primary keys comprising more than one field. So I'm going to create an index basically on the credit card number. Now this is going to take a little while because it's a lot of records to index. But, um, but now let's go back to this query of getting all the transactions for a given credit card number. So now that I run it, you realize that it took 0.009 seconds to retrieve it as opposed to 0.6 or 0.7 seconds. So this took 100 times less to retrieve an individual credit card number once the index was in place. That is a lot faster. If you think of many users connected to these databases, this increases in speed really allow the database to serve a lot more clients or a lot more processes concurrently. And that is basically, every, uh, that is basically an introduction to indices. A couple of cautionary tales. You might want to be tempted to index every single field just in case you want to search by last name or by this or by that. Too many indices then can also create um, a, an overload of the database trying to search, right? So it, indices use, use up a lot of space. So be, uh, be selective with your indices. Select only what you join tables on or what you try to use or what you use to look up information. And that's it. No more indices. Um, the second thing, indices can be dropped as well. You can drop an index, right, or add an index. You can add many indices. Um, and the other thing is that w over time, some of these indices start, because of the data structure that's used, some of these indices start to uh, lose their optimization. So what people do sometimes in databases, every so often, they re-index their tables at night. So then during the day, they're, they're working properly, okay? And that's, uh, that's our review of indices.